welcome back to On Stage at ACT Studio. We are back, stronger than ever, and we're going to introduce our new program, The Corona Diaries. In this new feature, we're going to be interviewing the production staff and directors of the upcoming season here at ACT Studio, and I am proud to start this off with our artistic director, Dennis O'Donovan. Dennis! Welcome back. Thank you. Theater, is, back. theater is up and running. What have you been up to since Corona started and affected everybody a year and a half ago? Take us back to what went on. Okay. Well, in the beginning, we didn't know whether we would ever reopen again. And for a couple of months, we, we laid very low. But it was always in the back of my mind. Yeah. So I began to look at programming. I began to look at, um, at uh, you know, what shows we might do. But the key thing was timing. I didn't know for quite a while when we could start again. That had to be like really unnerving to not know. We thought we might reopen as early as May or June of 2020. You know, we just didn't make any specific plans. We didn't announce anything. But behind the scenes, I was talking to directors, I was talking to people in the community, I was talking to actors, and we, we tried to figure out what we could do. So uh, Heidi Condon and Annie Morjohn put together a series of virtual cabaret shows. We used it as a fundraiser, and we got a, a modest amount of funds in from that. But it was a start. It broke the ice. Right. It, ke it kept people understanding that, that you were still here and you weren't going anywhere. Right. So then we started fundraising in earnest. Uh, we did some mass emails. We did a, a, a mass postal mailing. And... That generated just enough, a good, a really generous amount, uh, that kept us afloat. It helped us pay the rent mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and our utilities and all of that. Our landlord was extremely cooperative. Thank you, as landlord. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, John Martino. Uh, he was extremely cooperative, as he has always been. We have a great relationship with him. By the time we had finished with the cabaret shows, we wanted to take the next step, and we did some, some virtual shows completely recorded on video. So we completed two of those. We had a short play, Anton Chekhov's uh, The Marriage Proposal, and then we had a full-length play uh, the night of January 16th, a courtroom drama. Around that time, we're talking about now spring of 2021, uh -huh. we came up with when might we reopen and... Uh, we decided September, October was the right time frame, and ultimately October was the safer choice. Uh, we scheduled the importance of being earnest as the first show that we would do, uh, but we ran into some issues relating to COVID. So first and foremost, a part of reopening has always been safety. We decided we would not reopen until it was safe to reopen that there would be a vaccine, that it was sufficiently well, well mm -hmm. distributed and all of that, so that uh, we would not be a source of infection to the community. Well, and that's great because you're looking not only at the safety of your audience who are sitting side by side, mm -hmm. but the safety of your actors as well, who Absolutely. have to be intimate, maybe, maybe the wrong word, but definitely in proximity of each other as much yes. as anybody else. So yeah. you're looking at complete safety all around. Absolutely. And we came up with a policy, which is now posted on our website, that our casts and crews and staff are f fully vaccinated, that that's a requirement to work here. How, which, did, you pick, how did you pick the, the new season? I mean, you said you were... Okay, so I'll go back to when we closed. Okay. When we closed, we were in the middle of a run of Steel Magnolias. Right. Very well received, fantastic ensemble cast. Second week running... Everything's going all of a sudden, uh-oh. Yeah. So as we approached the second weekend, the, the news about COVID was starting to get much more serious. Mm -hmm. And um, we hoped we would make it till the end of the run, and we didn't. After the second weekend, we had to shut down completely. So we shut down. And again, we thought this is just a temporary blip and turned out to be a year and a half blip. So we had several shows scheduled and programmed to be the rest of that season, the mm -hmm. 19 and 20 season. And so when we started to put together the new season, we started with what did we not get to do? There was uh, Steel Magnolias, which we really wanted to finish. Mm -hmm. 
there was Faith Healer, there was Buyer and Seller. Right. So these big, these three that you're yeah, talking about so, were the so, big three that were that were viable to return. Exactly. That okay. was the foundation of the new season. Then we looked at shows that we had planned to do in the 2021 season, and we picked a few of those that we thought were the best choices to, to make part of the new, newly structured season. And then we needed to come up with a Christmas show, so we chose a uh, radio theater version of A Christmas Carol. So we added um, The Importance of Being Earnest, because mm -hmm. we didn't get to do the, um, the other version of it. We added a show that you and I talked about, Orphans. Right. Another one that was part of the new season, uh, Dearly Departed. And then we added one more called uh, Anybody for Murder, like Tennis Anyone, <laughs> uh, which is really going to be a lot of fun. That's going to cap off the season in May. Uh, and then you also have the, um, the Shorts Festival. Oh, you're absolutely right. So another idea that came up was, uh, people have been asking me about this for years, what about a night of short plays or what about local playwrights? Mm -hmm. So uh, Richie Lester came up with the idea of combining those two, creating an evening of short plays made up of short plays written by local playwrights. Um, so that takes us up to reopening, which is now going to be in November. Mm -hmm. so what is the hopes and futures of ACT going forward? A big part of that has to do with size and scale. There are plays that we would love to do that we can't do because the stage is too small. The other part of that is, is seating. 37 seats barely covers the cost of doing the plays. So with more seats, we will start to have a little bit less uh, dependence on ticket sales. So if we sell 70 seats instead of 35 seats, mm -hmm. There's a lot more that goes into the bank for future use. It's been a dream of mine to have three storefronts connected in a row and build a bigger theater inside of that. Well, f up until COVID, there's always been a store between our theater and our annex that was a cafe or some kind of food service. That middle space is now controlled by ACT. We've set it up as a charming and beautiful lobby and lounge for our patrons. The longer term, which will take some money, to tear down the walls between the two, the three stores, and create one big theater with a bigger, much bigger stage and with up to a hundred seats. If we succeed in doing that, number one, the kind of content we can bring in will become very attractive, uh -huh. and number two, the theater could really start to you know, build a bank account or a war chest for longevity. I've always personally thought of ACT as um, the little engine that could. You know, we've always kept going nice. and going and going and, and, and yes. survived and survived. And I've told more than one person um, that we're the best kept secret on the Treasure Coast. But with the plan to expand and all that, would make us an ACT a, a more recognizable force yeah. in the theater community, yeah. in the arts community, in Martin County, in the Treasure Coast. Yeah. Um, the way I put it is it would put us on the map. And hopefully the content that is then presented will be highly respected, highly sought after. Mm. The other thing I would like ACT to be able to do is to branch out into other kinds of theater in an outreach capacity. Bringing theater to senior communities where they can't come out, so we'll go to them mm -hmm. and bring them entertainment. Doing theater for a young audience. There's very little of that in the area. Touring with, with other shows for different audiences is also something that we have an ambition to do one day. And it's only by growing that we'll have the ability to do that. Obviously this is not something that is going to take care of itself. What are the plans to to get get you to that point? Is there fundraising? Is there more? Yeah, absolutely. If you go to our website, actstudiotheater.com, uh, we've got areas wh where we talk about our plans. We show the vision. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. No, I, because it, obviously <laughs> money makes the world go round, and mm -hmm. it, it does help to let people know how you can donate, how you can help the theater. The arts community is... Um, 
coming back. The arts community needs your support, um, and we will gladly take your uh, donations. We will gladly take your seats in uh, the theater. Uh, we would love to see you here, and Dennis, this has been very enlightening. I'm so glad we got a chance to sit down and do this because uh, ACT is near and dear to my heart as it is to you, and I hope we shall see you at the theater. Dennis, we will catch you around the theater. He's always here, and we will catch you the next time on the Corona Diaries and at on stage at ACT. Thanks. Thank you, Stuart, and thank all of you for watching.